Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 15th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad today looked at the latest payload being distributed by the Rick Exploit kit and turned out to be Medusa HTP. Now, this malware itself has been around a couple years, but hasn't really shown up much. And it has a somewhat unique command and control channel, which sort of is responsible for the HTTP part. Overall, it's used for denial of service. But uh, what's particularly unique about uh, this uh, particular payload is that it uses the HTTP 100 continue response code, which you typically don't see in normal web traffic. So this would make a pretty good indicator of compromise likely. In general, the protocol looks very much like HTTP. I would call it an HTTP like uh, protocol. It uses posts, it uses HTTP headers and the like. Like I said, that 100 continue is a little bit odd. And uh, then also it sort of breaks up the request into two parts, one up to the expect 100 continue line, and then it continues with the request, well, as the spec actually suggests after the 100 continue response code is received. It then returns a cookie, which actually does include the host's public IP address. So kind of interesting signaling going forth and back shouldn't be too hard to spot. And, and then of course, Brad as usual is making available the raw PCAPs and the malware samples. So if you wanna run this yourself, uh, here is your chance. Always refer to Brad's diaries uh, when students in the intrusion detection class ask for sort of more samples to really hone their skills with. And this actually makes a great sample for that. And security company Veronis is describing a little bit of modified crypto coin miner that they found on a customer system. Overall, it is still XMRIC, it's still mining Monero. The command control channel is a little bit different from what we usually see there, in particular that it uses the dynamic domain name system DuckDNS. DuckDNS is not one of the major dynamic domain name systems so may make a reasonable good indicator of compromise here. But take a look at their write up a lot of other little sort of odd things about uh, this particular malware. First of all, it's written in .NET also uses a little bit an odd installer in order to get on the system. NSIS, the null soft scriptable install system actually relies on an older version of 7-SIP. And if you try to uh, decode it or unzip it with a newer version of 7-SIP, you may not be successful. So this may be a little trick here in order to make it past some reverse analysis. Overall, I wouldn't really call it sort of sophisticated in that sense. And some of uh, these oddities that make reverse analysis a little bit more difficult may actually be more sort of a personal preference of whoever coded this and more sort of show some of the limitations of uh, their abilities. And actually on Monday, Intel released a couple of security updates that you probably should be aware of. First one is affecting the Intel processor identification utility for Windows. It does contain a privilege escalation vulnerability, which could be used for denial of service or information disclosure. Don't really see this as a huge issue given that you need local access, you need to run the utility. So you already have to have some access to the system. Second issue relates to the Intel Nook uh, little uh, PCs. Again, a privilege escalation vulnerability. This one even a little bit more tricky because the attacker needs to have bias access in order uh, to actually exploit this accordingly. The CVSS score is a little bit lower. But well, if you get around to it, you probably want to flash the bias. And well, HTTP2 is now apparently running on about 40% of all web servers out there. So a 
good timing, I think, for Netflix to take a closer look at the different implementations that people are using. And sadly, no big surprise, they found a number of issues with popular implementations from, for example, Apple, Amazon, Apache, Microsoft, and others. Mostly denial of service vulnerabilities here, uh, in particular sort of these type of vulnerabilities where you send data very slowly or uh, split up into very small frames. So very typical vulnerabilities actually for the type of protocol that HTTP2 is implementing where you are sending files in little blocks. I always compare HTTP2 to kind of re-implementing TCP in some ways. But anyway, so not a lot of patches are available for these vulnerabilities right now, but they will for sure trickle out over the next couple of weeks or months. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.